So the Survivor Series just finished, and I know a lot of people are, are going to be giving their reviews, which is great, but I'm not going to be doing the review here because let's talk about what happened. Let's get straight to the point, basically, folks. Let's talk about the ending of the Survivor Series pay-per-view. So we saw the finally, finally debuts of Steph Rollins and Dean Ambrose. They attack Ryback, and they put him through a table, and... Punk retained the title, which is all good, but everyone, and I'm seeing Twitter, and I'm look, watching on Facebook, and people are giving their thoughts, and it's hard to not be optimistic about where they're going to go with this annual next, because people are, like, gasping at the fact that Punk and Rollins and Dean Ambrose might have a chance to all be together. It's like an indie lover's dream, but I got to question this, because... What's going to happen next? That's the big question. What is going to be the follow-through to this? I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we don't see an ending of basically Ryback just squashing Dean Ambrose and Steph Rollins because that's a possibility. Now, I would have preferred to see Steph Rollins and Dean Ambrose make their separate debuts but now it seems like these are they're going to be paired up. And it leaves a lot of questions to be answered. So I'm definitely going to be looking at Raw tomorrow night and finding out what's going to happen next. Because this actually got my attention here. I was actually shocked to see what went on at the end of the pay-per-view. It was a subpar pay-per-view. It had its moments, but ultimately it was an average pay-per-view. And to see Dean Ambrose and Steph Rollins finally make their WWE debuts, it's about damn time. But I'm just hoping that they made the right decision in doing this, getting them on TV this way. So I'm really intrigued to find out what's going to happen next. I'm hoping, and you know, it's weird because, will this be like another Nexus? And I hope not. I hope not because, yes, Nexus started off very strong, but it fell extremely flat. Way too flat. Now, Steph Rollins is still the NXT Heavyweight Champion, so he's going to obviously have to drop the title now. And it leaves a lot of, lot to be, like, you know, we saw recently also, I believe like five NXT wrestlers from FCW got released. So they're starting to, you know, do things down in the level of the talents. They're bringing people up. They might bring in more people up. They're going to release more people. And... Tryouts, I heard, is going to be happening soon in January, I believe. So they might be getting new people as well to FCW slash NXT. But the question remains, what's going to happen next? What are they going to do with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose? They have a perfect opportunity now to either let these guys shine because these two guys have been on top of the radar in the developmental talent system for quite some time now. And WWE wants to put a lot of stock in them. So now... The writers, and I'm really, that's what, like, kind of makes me nervous because the writers and was it, you know, what what, what they're going to have to store for these two guys because a lot can happen now, but in my optimistic opinion, I think Ryback is just going to squash them. It's going to really hurt them if that does happen. So I'm hoping the direction that we see tomorrow night or Raw, I'm hoping it's going to be a good direction and to determine what's going to happen next for Dean Ambrose and Steph Rollins. But for now, both of those guys made a WWE debut. I am happy to see them finally make it on TV. So now next, what's going to happen? So let me know what you all think, folks. Talk to you all later.